Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here, and today we're going to be going over Unit 9, Notes 7. So we're going to be talking about divisions of polynomials. So on the previous note sheet, we reviewed how to do long division. Well, now we're going to take that long division, and we're going to apply it to the division of polynomials. So the first thing we're going to do, just like you were setting up any normal long division problem, is you're going to set up the box. So your, the, your divisor, what you're dividing by, is going to go on the outside. The dividend, or what you're dividing, is going to go on the inside. Then, the next thing you're going to do is find a number that multiplies the divisor to get the dividend. So we're going to look at just one single term at a time. So what do I need to multiply that first term to to get the first term of the dividend? Once I figure out what that is, I'm going to multiply that number by all parts of the divisor and subtract it from my original dividend. And I'm going to keep doing that until I've reached the end of the dividend. All right, and if a remainder exists at the end, you're going to write that over the divisor at the end. Now, a lot of this sounds really confusing when we write it out as words, but once you see it in practicality, it's really not that different than what you did when you did um, long division to start off with. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number one. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take what we're dividing by and put it on the outside of the box. And then we're taking what we're dividing and putting that on the inside of the box. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look first term to first term. So I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply x by to get x squared? Well, to multiply from x to x squared, I'm going to have to multiply by x. So notice that I put that on top of the 3x column because I'm trying to make columns based on the degree of my term. So I'm going to take x and I'm going to multiply it by x plus 5. So I'm going to take that x and distribute it in. So x times x is x squared and 5 times x is 5x. So here I get 5x squared plus 5x. So now I'm going to be taking that and subtracting it. So when I subtract it, I need to change the signs of each term. So x squared minus x squared is going to cancel out. Negative 3x minus 5x is negative 8x. And the next thing I'm going to do is drop down that negative 40. So now I'm going to ask myself, what do I need to multiply x by to make it a negative 8x? Well, to multiply x to get a negative 8x, I'm going to have to multiply by negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write minus 8 on top of my long division. Then I'm going to take negative 8 and I'm going to multiply my, by my divisor, which is x plus 5. So I'm going to take that negative 8 and distribute it in. So negative 8 times x is negative 8x and negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. So now I'm going to write that under my next piece. So remember, I'm subtracting this off, so when I do that, I need to change the signs of everything. Well, 8x minus 8x cancels out, and then the 40s also cancel out. So here, I have a remainder of 0. So since I have a remainder of 0, that means that x minus 8 is going to be my final answer for that division. So that's going to be my answer for number 1. Now, let's take a look at number two. So we're going to start by setting up our long division. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, and I'm going to put that underneath the long division box. And then on the outside, I'm going to put what I'm dividing by, which is 2x minus 1. So now what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be... Um, trying to figure out what multiplies to 2x squared. So I want to think about what I need to multiply 2x by to get 2x squared. So to get 2x from 2x squared, I need to multiply by x. So I'm going to put an x in my x column. And now I'm going to multiply each of these by x. So I get x times 2x minus 1. And now I'm going to distribute that in. So x times 2x is 2x squared x times negative 1 is negative x. So then I have 2x squared minus x. Now remember, I'm subtracting that off, so I need to change the signs of everything. So 2x squared minus 2x squared is going to cancel out. 3x plus x is going to give me 4x. And then I'm going to drop down the negative 5. So the next thing I need to figure out is what I need to multiply 2x by to make it 4x. So to go from 2x to 4x, I need to multiply by 2. 
So I'm going to put that in my constants column. So now I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to multiply it by my divisor, which is 2x minus 1. So now I'm going to distribute that in. So 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 2. So now I'm going to write that underneath this piece. So I'm subtracting that off. Whoa. So I want to change the signs of everything. So 4x minus 4x cancels out. Negative 5 plus 2 is going to give me a negative 3. So here I don't have a remainder of 0. So I'm going to have to write that out. Well, first of all, part of my answer is the x plus 2 that I got on top. Then, with the remainder, I'm going to take what my remainder is, which is negative 3, and I'm going to divide it by my divisor from the beginning of the problem, which in this case is 2x minus 1. So this right here is your final answer for number 2. Now, let's take a look at number 3. So what we're going to do for number 3 is I'm going to show you how to factor this using long division. So we're going to do one more practice of that. And then side by side next to it, I'm going to show you how to use synthetic division because long division can take a long time. So I'm going to show you another way of doing that. So let's go ahead and let's start with this long division problem. So we're going to start by setting up our box. So underneath the box, we have x squared plus 5x minus 24. And then on the outside of the box, I have x minus 3. So now, the first thing I need to do is I need to think about what I need to multiply x by to make it x squared. So to multiply x to get x squared, I need to multiply it by x. So I'm going to take my x minus 3, and I'm going to multiply it by x. So I'm going to distribute that in. So x times x is x squared. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So then I have x squared minus 3x. Okay, so now I'm going to be subtracting that off. So I want to change the signs of everything. So x squared minus x squared is going to cancel out. 5x plus 3x is going to give me 8x. Then I'm going to drop this next one down, this negative 24. So then my next step is I need to figure out what I need to multiply x by to get 8x. So to go from x to 8x, I'm going to have to multiply by 8, and I put that in my constant column. So I'm going to take 8, and I'm going to multiply it times my x minus 3. So I'm going to take the 8 and distribute it in. So then I get 8x minus 24. Now I'm subtracting that off, so I want to change the signs of everything. So 8x over 8x is going to cancel out, and negative 24 plus 24 cancels to 0. So that means I have a remainder of 0. So that means that x plus 8 is my final answer for number 3. So that's how you do that using long division. So now I'm going to show you what you need to do to do it via synthetic division. So I'm going to show you an example of it, and then on the next slide we're going to write down kind of the steps of how to use synthetic division. So the first thing I'm going to do is take what I'm dividing by and set it equal to 0. And I'm going to solve and I get x is equal to 3. So 3 is what's going to go in my half box. Then I'm going to take the coefficients of each of my terms and write it out. So since there's no coefficient with the x squared, that means that that coefficient is going to be 1. Okay? Then I have 5, and then I have negative 24. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is drop this coefficient down, and that's going to give me a 1. Then I'm going to take this number and multiply it by what's in the box. Well, 1 times 3 is 3. Once I get that product, I'm going to put it underneath my next term. Once it's underneath my next term, then I'm going to add down the columns. So 5 plus 3 is 8. Then I'm going to take this number, and again, I'm going to multiply it by what's in the box. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. Put it underneath the next term. Then again, I'm going to add down the columns. Negative 24 plus 24 is going to give me 0. So here I have a remainder of 0. This is going to be my constant, and this is going to be my x term. So I have 1x plus 8, which is the same as x plus 8. So what I wanted to show you is that you get the same answer regardless of which method you use. So you really have a chance here to pick the method that works best for you and use that. A lot of students do end up choosing synthetic division, but that doesn't mean that you have to. Okay. So let's look at our steps. So the first step is to set the divisor equal to 0, solve it, and put it in the box. 
Then we're going to list the coefficients behind the box. Okay? Then we're going to drop the first coefficient down. Then we're going to multiply the divisor by the first result and put that next under the next coefficient. Then you're going to add down the columns. Once you've added down the columns, you're going to go back to step number two, or not step number two, you're going to go back to step number four. You're going to multiply it by the divisor, put it under the next column, and then add down the column again. And you're going to keep doing that till you've gotten to the end of all the coefficients. And then if you have a remainder, you're going to write it over the original divisor, just like we did when we did long division. Okay, um, so if you want to take a second and pause the video, make sure you get this written down. We're going to go ahead and move on to synthetic division. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number five, okay? So the first thing I want to do for number five, or apparently number seven. I just deleted number five. Sure did. Okay, so going on a blank slide. All right, so for number five, okay, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take x plus 3 and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I get that x is equal to negative 3. So that's what's going to go in my box. Then I'm going to list out each of these coefficients. So when I list them, you're going to notice that I don't list the x's with them. And if there's no coefficient with the x, that means that the coefficient is 1. So please make sure you're writing 1, not 0. So we're going to take this 1 and drop it down. Then we're going to take this 1 and multiply it by the negative 3. Well, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And then we're going to add down the columns. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. Then I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by my divisor. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And now I'm going to add down the columns. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. So this is my remainder, this is my constant, and this is my x. So 1x plus 2 would be my answer, which I could also just write as x plus 2. And since my remainder is 0, I don't have to worry about writing that at all. So that would be my answer for number 5. Now, let's take a look at number 6. So for number 6, you have x squared plus 9x plus 20 divided by x plus 5. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that x plus 5 and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, so I get that x is equal to a negative 5. So that's what's going to go in my synthetic division box. So then I'm going to write out my coefficients. So I have 1, 9, and 20. So I'm going to take the first one and drop it down. So I'm going to multiply that by my divisor. So 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And then I'm going to add down the columns. 9 plus negative 5 is 4. So then 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And then I'm going to add down the columns, and again, I get 0. So here my remainder is 0, my constant is 4, and my x term is 1. So I can either write that out as 1x plus 4, or most students would write this out as x plus 4. So that's my answer for number 6. Now, let's take a look at number 7. So you're going to notice on number 7 that we have a couple more terms, but it's still going to be the same process. We're still going to start by setting our x plus 3 is equal to 0 and solving. So then I get that x is equal to a negative 3, and I'm going to put that in my box. Okay, so then I'm going to write out my coefficients. I have 2, I have 3, I have negative 4, and I have 15. So now I'm ready to add down the columns. So I'm going to start by taking that 2 and dropping it down. So 2 times negative 3 is going to give me a negative 6. And then once I've done that, I'm going to add down the columns. So 3 plus a negative 6 is a negative 3. So then I'm going to take this and multiply it by what's in the box. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Then I'm going to add down the columns. Negative 4 plus 9 is a positive 5. Then I'm going to take that 5, multiply it by a negative 3, and I get a negative 15. When I add those two together, I get 0. So there, my remainder is going to be 0, my constant is 5, my x term is negative 3. Now here, with this 2, I'm going to make that an x squared term. So I'm going to keep having the exponent on my x go up until I have uh, no more numbers to assign to it. So that means that my final answer for this is going to be 2x squared, minus 3x plus 5. 
So when we're doing synthetic division, our goal is to try and get the coefficients that are going to exist once we divide it out. Okay, now number eight is going to be a little bit more tricky. So the first thing we're going to do is set that denominator equal to zero. So we're going to subtract one from both sides. So I get 3x is equal to a negative one. And then I'm going to divide both sides by three. So here I get that x is equal to a negative one third. So that's what I'm going to put in the box. So when x is equal to a negative one third, remember that that's the same as dividing by a negative three. So when you're going to do this synthetic division, it's actually not going to be that different. So now I'm going to write out all of my terms. And we're going to go ahead and drop them down. So I'm going to start by dropping that first term down. So I'm going to drop down that 9. Then I'm going to take that 9 and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 1 third. Well, multiplying by a negative 1 third is really the same as dividing by a negative 3. So 9 divided by a negative 3 is going to give me a negative 3. Okay? 9 minus 3 is going to give me 6. So then when I take 6 and I multiply it by a negative one third, I'm going to get a negative two. Then 11 minus two is going to give me nine. And then I'm going to do nine times a negative one third. So nine times a negative one third is the same as nine divided by a negative three, which is a negative three. Okay, so now this one has one trick to it. So what you're going to notice at the beginning is that I have a three on the outside of my x. All the problems we've done so far for 5 through 7 have not had a number with the x. When there's a number outside of the x, you need to take all your non-remainder terms at the end and divide them by what number is in front of the x. So I need to take all of these and divide them by 3. Okay, so my remainder is going to be negative 7. So this is my x squared, my x, and my constant. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so that's going to be 3x squared. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that's going to be 2x. 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. And then I'm going to take my remainder and divide it by 3x plus 1. So a lot of students ask me, well, if we're dividing everything by the, t the coefficient in front of the x, why aren't we dividing the remainder? That's because when you look at the remainder, we're dividing by the 3 eventually. It's just in the fact that we're dividing it by the original divisor. The other ones, we're not dividing them by the original divisor, so we have to divide by 3 to account for that. So let's go ahead and let's practice another problem like that. I want to practice number 9. Okay, so for number nine, again, we're going to start by taking our divisor and setting it equal to zero. So we're going to start by adding four to both sides. So that's going to give us 5x is equal to four. Divide both sides by five. And here I'm going to get that x is equal to four fifths. So that's what I'm going to put in my box is four fifths. And then I'm going to write out all of my coefficients. So I have 50, 10, negative 35, and negative 7. And now I'm ready to do synthetic division. So I'm going to start by dropping the 50 down. So multiplying by 4 fifths can be really confusing to students. So what I recommend is taking 50, multiplying it by 4, and then dividing by 5. So to get my number, I'm going to do 50 times 4 divided by 5. And when I do that, I get 40. So 10 plus 40 is 50. So same thing, 50 times 4 divided by 5 is going to give me 40. Negative 35 plus 40 is going to give me 5. So then I'm going to do 5 times 4 divided by 5. And when I do that, I am going to get 4. So then I have negative 3 plus 4, which is going to be a negative 3. So here's my remainder, my constant, my x, and my x squared. But if we remember at the beginning, we have a 5 on the outside of the x. So I need to take each of these and divide them by 5, <coughs> excuse me, before I put them with the x squared. So 50 divided by 5 is 10, and then we have x squared. 50 divided by 10, uh, 5 is 10, and then we have x. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And then we're not dividing our remainder because we're going to take that remainder and we're going to put it um, over what's being divided, which is 5x minus 4. So this right here is our final answer for number 9. Now let's take a look at number 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that divisor and set it equal to 0. 
So I'm going to bring the 3 over to the other side, so I get 2x is equal to a negative 3, divide both sides by 2, and I get that x is equal to a negative 3 over 2. So that is what is going to go in my box. And then I'm going to write out my coefficients. So I have 2, negative 17, and negative 38. So I'm going to start by dropping that 2 down. So to do the multiplication, I'm going to do 2 times a negative 3 divided by 2 in my calculator. So 2 times a negative 3 divided by 2 gives me a negative 3. Negative 17 minus 3 is going to give me a negative 20. So again, negative 20 times a negative 3 divided by 2. And when I do that, I get a positive 30. So negative 38 plus 30 is going to give me a negative 8. So this is my remainder, and this is my x and my constant. But if you remember at the beginning, we had that 2 out in front. So I need to divide both of these by 2 before getting my final answer. Oops, and I wrote this the wrong way. So this is going to be my x and my constant. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I have 1x, which is just 1. Negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. And then I'm going to take my remainder of negative 8, and I'm going to divide it by what I was originally dividing by, which is 2x plus 3. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 11. Now number 11 seems overwhelming, but it's really not that much different than when we, what we've been doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x plus 2 and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, so I get that x is equal to negative 2. So negative 2 is what's going to go in my box. Now I'm going to write out all of my coefficients, but what I notice is that there is no x squared term. So we jump from x to the third to x to the fourth. So to account for that, when I write out all my coefficients, I need to put in 0 as a placeholder for the fact that I skipped the x squared term. So I have 6, 15, and then instead of going right to negative 28, I'm going to put 0. And then I have negative 28 and negative 6. So now I'm ready to do my synthetic division. So I'm going to start and I'm going to take this 6 and drop it down. So 6 times negative 2 is going to be a negative 12. And then 15 minus 12 is going to give me 3. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. 0 plus a negative 6 is a negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. Negative 28 plus a positive 12 is negative 16. Negative 16 times a negative 2 is a positive 32. Negative 6 plus 32 is a positive 26. Now this time we don't have a coefficient in front of our x, so we do not have to do any dividing. This is our remainder, our constant, our x, our x squared, and then this time we're actually going to also have an x to the third. And in general, the degree of your answer should be one degree less than the original problem. So we're going to have 6x to the third plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 16. And then we're going to take our remainder of 26 and divide it by x plus 2. So that right there is my final answer for number 11. Now, let's take a look at number 12. So notice for number 12 that we're skipping an x to the fourth term. So we're going to have to put in a placeholder for that. So we're going to take x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I get that x is equal to 3. So I have 3 here, so then I'm going to do 2 for this coefficient. Now, I don't have an x to the fourth term, so I'm going to put 0. And then this negative x to the third, that's going to be a negative 1 coefficient. And then I have 3x squared, negative 2, and 7. So now I'm ready to do the synthetic division. So I'm going to start by taking that 2 and dropping it down. So 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. 0 plus 6 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Negative 1 plus 18 is 17. 17 times 3 is 51. 3 plus 51 is 54. 54 times 3 is 153. Negative 21, or 2 plus 153 is 151. 151 times 3 is 453. And 453 plus 7 is 460. So that's going to be my remainder. There's no number in front of the x, so I don't have any dividing that I need to do. So I'm going to have an x, an x squared, an x to the third, and an x to the fourth, which is good because this degree is one less than the original degree. 
So now I'm just going to write out my final answer. So I have 2x to the fourth plus 6x to the third plus 17x squared plus 54x plus 151, and I ran out of space for my remainder, plus 460 divided by x minus 3. So this right here is your crazy long final answer for number 12. So now let's just go over these final two word problems, and it's really going to be the same idea. So this here says that the area of a rectangle is x to the third plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 square inches. The width of the rectangle is x plus 1. What is the length of the rectangle? So if you're thinking about a rectangle, a rectangle is length times width. So to find the length of it, we need to take the area and divide it by the width. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take the area and divide it by the width. So we're going to take x to the third plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 and divide it by the width. So I'm going to do that using synthetic division. So I'm going to start by setting my divisor equal to 0 and solving. So here I get that x is equal to a negative 1. So negative 1 goes in the box and then I'm going to write out all of my terms. So I have 1, 3, 4, and 1. And now I'm ready to do my synthetic division. So I'm going to start by dropping that 1 down. And then I'm going to do 1 times a negative 1, which is a negative 1. 3 plus a negative 1 is 2. 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. 4 plus a negative 2 is 2. 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. And that gives me a negative 1 here. So I have remainder, constant, x, and x squared. There's no number in front of my divisor, so I don't need to divide by anything. So my answer then is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 2. Then my remainder is negative 1, so I'm going to write that over x plus 1. And because this is a word problem, I need to label it. So my distance is in inches. So this right here would be the formula for the length in inches. Now, let's take a look at number 14. Number 14 says that the area of a triangular sale is 16x to the fourth minus 60x squared minus 28x squared plus 56x minus 32. The height of the sale is x minus 4. What is the length? Well, first it's important to look at how we calculate out the area of a triangle. So the area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, or you could look at it as base times height divided by 2. So we're going to solve this to figure out how we solve for b. So 2 times the area is equal to base times height. Then we're going to divide both sides by height. So to get the base of a triangle, if we're given the area and the height, we need to do twice the area divided by 2. So I'm just going to set that up in our system. So we're going to do twice the area, maybe, x to the third minus 28x squared. I did not give myself enough space. Plus 56x minus 32 divided by x minus 4. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is distribute. Okay, so I'm going to see what each of those is. So I'm going to have 32x to the fourth minus 120x to the third minus 56x squared plus, and again, I'm multiplying all of these times 2, so 56 times 2 is 112 minus 64. And that right there is what I'm going to divide by x minus 4. So I'm going to do that using synthetic division, okay? So the first thing I want to do, if I could draw, that would be great. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take x minus 4 and set it equal to 0. So when I add 4 to both sides, I get that x is equal to 4. And that's what's going to go in my box. So then I have 32, negative 120, negative 56, 112, and negative 64. So now I'm going to drop that first one down. So I'm dropping down 32. So 32 times 4 is going to give me 128. Negative 120 times or plus, sorry, 128 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Fifth, negative 56 plus 32 is a negative 24. Okay, negative 24 times 4 gives me a negative 96. 
negative 96 plus 112 gives me 16. 16 times 4 gives me a positive 64. So then I end up getting a remainder of 0. Okay, so our divisor does not have a number out in front of it, so we do not need to divide by anything. So this is my constant, my x, my x squared, and my x to the third. So my answer is going to be 32x to the third plus 8x squared minus 24x plus 16. Now this was being measured in meters, so I need to label it m. So that right there is your final answer, and that concludes your last notebook video of the trimester. Thanks for listening.